Property drawers, just like editors, allow you to change the look of your scripts in Inspector. You can change the text color, add some buttons and some other fancy functionality. Overall, it can improve your workflow and make the whole development process easier. But why should you use the property drawers instead of the normal editor? Well, when I create system.serializable class and it is not deriving from the mono behavior and I try to create a custom editor for it, you can see that right at the start it is giving us error. And this is just because the class is not deriving from the mono behavior, so it is not treated as any other class. And that's why we need to use property drawers. Even though this might look a bit too complicated, don't worry, I will explain everything to you. I have an empty scene and two scripts. One is the action manager, which is just holding a list. And into the list, we can add as many of the action to do classes, which is system.serializable. And why is it called the action to do? Because I was using it for the action trigger system. So you can see that I can spawn object and so on. Without property drawers, the list of the actions looks just like this, which is not quite what I want. I want to be able to, for example, select the spawn object and it should show me only the properties that I want to be setting when I want to spawn some object or when I select the move object, I want to show only the properties when moving the object. I might also want to add some custom button that would trigger some function or just overall improve the look of the inspector. So now let's create the property drawer. For this we need to create a folder called editor into which we will be adding all of the editor and property drawer scripts. So create C sharp script. I will call it action property drawer. We need to add using unit editor to be able to derive from the property drawer. Just like that, we can delete both of these voids. And above the class, we also need to type which class we want to have the property drawer on. So custom property drawer, type of, and here we need to put the name of our class, which is the action to do. We'll also add two public override voids. The first one is on GUI which is going to run when we hover our mouse over the GUI element. And then we'll add public override, and this time it will be float for the get property height, where we will just need to return the height of the whole class. In the override void on GUI, we can delete the base and we'll start the serialized property. So type editor GUI, dot begin property. Here we will just type the properties that come out of the parameters of the on GUI. So the position, label and property. And just end the property at the end of the void. Now everything we want to change in the action to do class will be typing between those two lines. When we type editor GUI, then we have many options of what we can do. We can, for example, create label, so label field. Into the parameters, we need to add the rect position, so create new rect for the position. Here we need to have the position y, position x, the width and height, so we can get the position from the parameter here. Now we have it with the default values, but if we want to make it, for example, higher, we can adjust plus and using the editor GUI utility, we can, for example, access the single line height, which will make it higher. So just input the position into the label field and give it some text. Now in the action manager, we can see that it is telling us the text. It is two lines high, but the height of the element is not correct. For this, we need to just return a different height. So we can, for example, just get the single line height and multiply it by any number we want. And yeah, this looks a bit better. But the label field on its own is useless. 
Next, we can try to access some of these variables, for example, the action type. For this, we will create new serialized property. We can call it the action property is equal, and we'll do property, which is one of the parameters on this void on GUI, dot find property relative, and here we will type the name of the variable. So for me, it is action type. But this on its own doesn't do anything, because we have just gotten the property, but we are not doing anything with it. So we can type editor GUI, that property field and to the parameters again we need to input the position but you can see that we have the property so we are setting the new rect which is the position so position x position y because i want to have it a bit lower i'm adding the three lines of height then the width height inputting it to the property field, so the action position, and then actually the action property. Change the overall height of the element. Now in the inspector, we can see that the text is correct. There are a few lines of free space. And then we actually have the enum, which is the action type. So I can select the type. It is still not doing anything, but it is getting better. I just had to change the height to just the single line height so it is not doing any weird stuff. Now I don't think we need this text. Next thing you might want to do is actually get a value from the enum, because right now we just have the serialized property, but we don't have value of the enum. So I'm setting the type, action type, named it action type, and we'll get it from the action property. That, because this is enum, I will do enum value index, and then we just need to parse it as the action type. And like this, we have access the value of the action type, so we can do some more interesting stuff, such as if the action type is equal to something. Just to test it, I have added few if statements and some debug that logs. And now we can see that when I select the spawn object, it is telling me that it is trying to spawn object. Then play sound, everything works correctly. Next thing I might want to do is that when I have selected the spawn object, I will actually show the properties that correspond to the spawning object, which is the object to spawn and the spawn position. So we will again need to get the serialized property of these variables and then we can add the property field. And now when I select the spawn object, it is only showing me the object to spawn and spawn position. When I select move object, it is showing me the object to move. So how I made it? In the if statements, I'm just creating the position. I'm setting the correct y position. So just adding some lines to the height. Then I'm getting the serialized property, which is the variable name, and then adding the property field, doing it this way with all of the other properties. And I also had to do some logic in the get property height, because obviously when we select the move object, it is only, I think, five lines height, but when I select the spawn object, it is higher. So I have created a new float height, and from the start I set it to four lines, then I get the serialized property of the action type so that we can compare it. If it is the spawn object, to the height I add 2. If it is the move object, I add only 1. And then I return the height. Now let's try adding some button so that when I press it, it for example sets the action type to move object. So we'll just add if gui.button. Then we need the position and the content. So I created the position, same way as before, just set it a bit lower. Then I ask if we press the button, give it the position, some text that will show on the button, and then what I want to happen. So I want to set the action type, but if I would set this action type, it wouldn't do anything, 
because this is just my variable. So I need to set the action property, and because it is enum, I am setting enum volume index one, which is the move object. Yeah, it is not looking the best. We could just move it a bit lower, make the height a bit bigger, and so on. But when I press it, it doesn't do anything because we are in the move object. But I can try setting play sound, clicking this button, and you can see that it does the action that I set in the code. With this, I think you could also spawn some object and assign it to the variable and so on. And the last thing that I will show you today is how to change the color, for example, of the text, how you can change the size and overall the style of the text. I will be changing the style of this action type label. So what we'll need to do is disable the label on the property and create our own. When creating the property field, I will set the GUI content to none, just like this, so it is not showing us any text. We'll move it a bit to right and add our own label here. So just increase the X position by, let's say, 80 and decrease the width. Yeah, I think we should be able to fit the label here. So we will create new GUI style. We can call it just style equals new GUI style. And then we can set, for example, the color. So style dot normal dot text color equals new color. And we can set our color. Then we will create our label for which we need position. Just like that. And we can say editor GUI dot label field. So we have the action label position and just create the label. And also add our style, which we have just called style. Here in the style, we can obviously set many other things. For example, style, dot, font size, font style, font, and all of that stuff. And now we can see that the text is successfully showing with its new style. And like this, you can modify the scripts in your inspector as you want. Property drawers are definitely useful for bigger projects so that you can make your scripts more organized. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in next videos. Bye!